I'm making a top-down shooter multiplayer mobile game with an emphasis on movement, strategy, and class creation. In the last devlog, we set up networking and added bots so that we don't have to use the networking. That's all looking good, but there's one problem. The game is lame. We're going to try and fix that in this devlog. Right now, all you can do is walk around and spray at enemies mindlessly, which is actually pretty fun, but there's a lot of game mechanics that I still need to implement. These will hopefully make the game a bit more interesting. Let's start with shotguns, the ultimate antidote to lameness. So the first challenge here was making an aiming indicator that accurately shows the spread and range of the shotgun. I started trying to draw one in Photoshop, but then I realized how bad I am at drawing perfectly symmetrical geometric shapes. Using a regular sprite to do this means I'd have to redraw the indicator every time I change the spread angle. I could maybe scale the image, but then we'd be changing the aspect ratio. Even if I do draw a different indicator for every shotgun, it would be hard to get the image to match up exactly with the range and spread that my program uses. So instead of an image, I'm going to use a mesh as the indicator. That way, I can procedurally generate it based on the weapon's attributes. The indicator is a physical plane in the scene instead of an image, and I can define all the vertices of that plane in my code. After a little bit of trig, that was working perfectly. I also changed the indicator for the assault rifle so it matches. I like this better than the one we had before because it clearly shows the range of the weapon. I spent longer than I'd like to admit trying to add a black outline to this. Maybe one day I'll learn shaders and figure it out. Alright, now we need to do the shooty part of the shotgun. Shotguns in real life shoot a cluster of pellets instead of a single bullet. Most video games simulate this by performing a cluster of raycasts at random angles. I had an idea of using a formula to calculate the damage instead of raycasts. For example, the damage would be based directly on the enemy's distance from the player and distance from the center of the spread. This would make the shotguns more consistent and reliable. The problem is, things get a lot more complicated when there are obstacles in between the gun and the enemy. So I decided to go the raycast route, but instead of using completely random angles, I shoot the pellets at fixed intervals. Although unrealistic, this helps with consistency a lot. My character smoothly rotates to the aiming direction because it looks bad if it just snaps there. The shooting direction is based on where the character is facing instead of where the player is aiming. For single shot weapons like shotguns, this can cause some frustration if the player releases the joystick before the character has fully rotated. To get around this, I increased the rotation speed and made single shot weapons always fire towards the aim direction, no matter where the character is facing. Oh yeah, I also made the raycast start at the center of the character instead of the barrel of the gun, so that you can shoot people no matter how close they are. And there we have it! Shotguns! Next, I added some desperately needed cooldown for the shotgun, and I implemented a rudimentary weapon swapping system. Okay, I want to work a little bit on the user interface now. I've always had a really hard time with UI design, mainly the colors. The issue is, I don't really have a color scheme or a specific style at this point, and it's kind of hard to make all the graphics feel cohesive without one. Looking at some other mobile shooters, it seems like there's only four options. First, all one color. It's definitely easy to create a cohesive look with this approach, but I feel like it only works with a gold color. It would look weird if I made all the buttons green, for instance. And gold obviously doesn't work with my game right now. Secondly, we have white and gray. My background is too light for this, so that brings us to black. Black looks good on my light-colored background, but I don't think it goes very well with the cartoony art style. The final option is a consistent base color. For example, it's dark blue in Brawl Stars. This seems like the best way to go. Here's what I came up with. I'm kind of trying to make the base color black, but keep it pretty colorful. I'm not super sold on this. It kind of seems like there are too many unrelated colors together. I might go back to plain gray joysticks. Let me know in the comments what looks better. These bars in the middle are for health and ammo. I really wanted to keep this information right next to the player so it's always immediately readable. I also don't want to cover up the top and bottom of the screen because the screen is narrower there and all that screen space is needed to see what you're shooting at. Now the game is looking suspiciously like Brawl Stars. I'm not sure how that happened. I linked up the health and ammo bars and added reloading. There's not much to say about reloading, except that I think it adds quite a bit of extra strategy to the game, because you have to be careful about when you attack and where the cover is, etc, etc. 
It also limits spamming with the spray weapons. I also removed the health bars from the enemies. That's because I have a different plan for them. I'll get to that later. Next I'm going to finish up weapon switching, but first I need weapons to switch between, and this trash is not going to cut it anymore. Modeling low poly weapons is surprisingly easy, especially when you can just trace images online. That's not copyright, is it? Texturing was the hard part. I was torn between going for a more stylized look or just your standard low poly single color approach. Then I remembered more is less, I mean less is more. The only reason to have a more detailed texture would be so that it looks good in menus or UI, but I won't worry about that right now. I'm pretty happy with how these turned out. The models are looking pretty sexy in game, and now we can switch between them. Cool. Notice the icon switching in the top right? So yeah, I'm planning on adding lots of different weapons, and players will be able to switch between two. This once again adds a lot of complexity to the game in terms of class creation and weapon combos. You'll also notice that I added damage indicators. These are to replace the health bars. I think this will help prevent third partying and targeting of the weaker players. And it also just declutters the screen. How about we add an SMG? Right now I'm thinking there will be three main classes of weapons. Assault rifles will have a large range, high damage, and slower fire rate. Shotguns will have a close range, high damage, and low fire rate. Submachine guns will have a short range, low damage, and high fire rate. Now, in order to have a bit more differentiation between the assault rifles and SMGs, I think the SMGs are going to have Bloom. Yay, everyone likes Bloom. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, yeah, oh yeah. Give me that Bloom, baby. What I mean by this is the SMGs will have some inaccuracy. I actually think this will make them easier to use because they won't require as much precise aim. It also makes their effectiveness change based on distance as opposed to a hard stop. Animations. So I have a bit of a confession to make. I didn't make the walking animations that you've been seeing. I actually downloaded them from a website called Mixamo, which allows you to map any of the animations in their huge collection onto a custom character. It's pretty cool. This works great for prototyping, but I'd like to add a bit more control over the animations, especially now that I need to add some more of my own. So I embarked on the painful process of animating no Face Soldier. The character up until this point has always had his gun out, which doesn't look too bad, but I feel like it would be more natural if he walked with the gun up to his chest instead. Before long, I had a nice walk cycle. Although, I guess it looks more like a jaunt. The good news is, none of these animations really matter because they are all going to be seen from a top-down view. Despite the early success, things quickly went downhill. The animating wasn't that hard, using Blender was hard, and importing things from Blender into Unity was hard. I have very little experience with this 3D modeling and animating stuff. But eventually, I did manage to scrape together a set of decent animations, which included a new spicy reload and weapon swap. I added everything into the game, and boy is it looking good. Unfortunately, my suffering had not yet met its end. There was one task which remained. In my first prototype, one of the first things I added was dashing. Dashing and other movement abilities like this will be a core part of my game, so I want that to be implemented as fast as possible. The thing is, dashing is boring, so we're going to do a dive roll. The problem is, I have to animate a dive roll. Blah. Okay, it's interesting. Wow, that doesn't look half bad. I'm telling you, this top-down angle is a lifesaver. With dive rolling implemented, it's much easier to get into cover, retreat when in danger, and close the gap between enemies to get in close with the shotgun. I need to talk about mobile controls a bit. The dive is triggered with a button and then aimed with the shoot joystick. What I'm going to try and do is keep all the buttons on the right side of the screen so that players never have to take their finger off of the move joystick. It would be awkward if I put the dive button on the left side of the screen because then the player would have to stop moving while aiming the dash. I think I'm going to make tapping the shoot joystick trigger a weapon swap, and maybe reloading will just be tapping anywhere else on the screen. Once again, I'm doing my best to limit the number of buttons on the screen. Alrighty. So far, we've added quite a bit of complexity to the game, and it is, without a doubt, a lot less lame. But I think we can do even better. There's a few things that I can't wait to add. Although small, I think they'll make a world of difference. 
First of all, I'm going to yoink a couple free sound effects from online. Up until this point, my game hasn't had any sound, and a game without sound is like... a board game. Keep in mind these are just placeholders and they haven't been edited at all, so they don't sound perfect. Even so, just this little addition adds so much more life and excitement to the game. Next up, kill confirmations. I think that's what you call them. Basically, I need to let the player know when they've actually gotten a kill. For now, I'm just going to make a skull pop up, but later it will probably be best to add some text like, you've eliminated player blah blah blah, plus 10, something like that. Add a satisfying sound effect to go along with it, and you've got yourself a dopamine fountain. <laughs> ah, perfect. And we can't forget about the holy mother of game juice, screen shake. Now the shotgun has a bit more oomph to it. Yeah, I think I'm officially addicted to my own game. Although I may have made the shotgun a bit overpowered. And don't worry, the dive roll will have a cooldown eventually. Before? After. Not too shabby. What is shabby is how I've duplicated the same rock 10 times randomly throughout my scene. In the next devlog, I'm going to design the first actual game map complete with a working building, choke points, and maybe some dead bushes. You should probably subscribe if you want to see that. Feel free to fire away any suggestions or ideas that you have in the comments. And if you really want to, I guess you can like the video. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go refactor all the code I've written in the past two weeks. Oh, and also fix that.